for the Van Riemsdijks, for the Terra Vinans, do you say anything to them? Do you think the team kind of talks to them about the enormity of the situation? Well, we've got some guys that haven't been in this situation before, and I think uh, guys have played a lot of big games, and there's some guys that uh, can share that message, and uh, I let those guys talk to them about it, and I just think as a team we don't want to change too much our preparation and our focus going into a game. Joel, notice you had a little chat with Jonathan Taves on the ice at the end of practice today. You just, I don't know if you can share anything or give us a sense of what you might have said. No, but you know when you're talking with Johnny, he's, he always talks about the right things and it's all about the team and you know he's ready. Coach, you talked about the, the younger guys. Can you put yourself in the head of uh, Kimo Timonen last go around with this opportunity ahead? Well, he's been in, in this situation on the other side, and uh, and uh, he was having fun with the guys about it yesterday. And uh, certainly, uh, you love his experience. You love uh, the situations he's been through. Uh, it's a tremendous opportunity for him. I commend him how he's handled a tough situation for us. But uh, we like his positioning. We like his experience, and uh, you know, we like what he brings to our team. Joel, have you since you brought Corey Crawford back in in the Nashville series and he made those 13 saves and he's been on a run? Have you learned anything more about him, particularly in these situations in closeout games? Well, he's uh, you know he's a competitor, and I think uh, bigger settings and big stages, we find the regular season the games are on the line. He always rises at a challenge, makes a big save, moves forward. Um, you know, goaltending it really gets magnified of uh, you know some of the ones you don't stop. And, uh, but one thing with Crow, he always moves forward in a positive way, and, and that battle within him uh, finds a way to get through it. And, you know, I think in the last game he was sharp. He's on top of things, rebound of control, and very effective in a lot of ways. And, you know, he just seems to move forward in the right way. Joel, over here, um, can you compare, if you go back to 2010, when so many of your guys had never been through it, the feeling heading into game six compared to now when so many of your guys know what to expect? Yeah, I think when we, we we going into the game the night before, the day before, we only had one or two guys that had been in that situation before, and it was a, uh, and I think that helped uh, getting a feel for what they went through and how they approached it, and um, we've got a lot of guys in it now. I just think the appetite uh, is real, and uh, how you can uh, either calm guys down or focus in the right way heading into yesterday's sleep and today's day. Um, is beneficial in a lot of ways, uh, but the thing is you want to come, you want to be excited, but you want to be in control. Joe, regardless of what happens tonight, can you kind of put it in perspective playing for this third Stanley Cup in sixth season, kind of what it all means? Well, it's a compliment to the organization uh, from the outset, uh, having patience and then uh, having a lot of ton, of ton of skill and a lot of real good kids uh, back in the uh, 77 or 8 uh, those years and and uh, always been a fisher coming in at the the right time when they're all sitting on go and um, but uh, we've gone through a couple of years where the transition from our team that ended the year to the start of the year almost was 50 percent gone and uh, I think Stan's done a great job as far as rebuilding and um, retooling on the go um, this year and, and that the deadline uh, made some acquisitions to give us some experience as well. So it's been a uh, kind of different uh, evolution each one of the years, um, but it's it shows you in, our, in the game uh, that you got to be ready to move along and, and, and adapt to, with the salary cap world. But it's a, it really talks about net net uh, the guys that have been here from day one, uh, the way they prepare and the way they compete and how important it is for those guys to, to win. Joel, I'm curious how much following up on that question. Um, have you talked to Scotty about being in this situation of winning multiple titles in six years and what those conversations might be like, or is it all about what's going on on the ice? Yeah, we're more so focused on what we're doing on the ice, but it's nice to have that presence and that experience around um, at all levels. I mean, Scotty's uh, he has been through the wars. He's been through different situations, uh, through a playoff si series or playoff series. And uh, I think he knows uh, the mindset uh, in all situations. And we've been fortunate ourselves. We've been in all situations uh, in the course of one series, up, down, and uh, and backs against the wall or a chance like today. So it's a, uh, you know, we have some good people throughout our organization. all have uh, different types of experiences, and I think we all rely on one another at the, at the needed time. Joel, is, uh, is Hedman's defense on Kane an issue you feel you have to deal with specifically, or do you just figure you'll let it play out and eventually he'll work it out? Well, I mean, that was a matchup uh, that's kind of evolved, uh, you know, when they did get apart. Um, you know, I think Kaner, uh, we talk about 
uh, your top guy some nights not producing uh, at the regular rate, and then you look at the sometimes it's the matchup that uh, can, can have something to say with that, and we're playing against a top guy, and um, so he's maybe not against Johnny as much. It's usually the other way around, and uh, but that's uh, we say you still got to absorb uh, an assignment that takes a lot there. That's definitely uh, consuming for the opponent, and I think that's uh, that's one of the reasons why they're not out there a lot. Um, but we'll see how that plays out. Kaner, uh, you know, eventually he'll find a way, and uh, that's what makes him the competitor he is. Joel, Kimo was asked if he knew where the puck was from 2010, and he thought it still might be in the back of the net, and uh, he was hoping Kaner could do for him what he did against him this time. Well, I don't think anybody knows the answer to that question about the puck. It took me forever to find out where it was at that time initially, and uh, certainly I'd say... Uh, no, it's a, it's a great opportunity for the two of them. Um, we'll see. Uh, Joel, you're playing a team tonight that has been very good in these types of situations when they've faced elimination. Um, is that something that you have to remind your team of and, and make sure that you're ready to uh, to to get you know deal with the onslaught that you're probably going to face? Yeah, we expect a dangerous team. Uh, there's been. Uh, no letdown. They've been they've been after us uh, since day one. Uh, the puck drop. Uh, they've been they're a good hockey team. I think there's a ton of respect on our side. What they're capable of. Every shift is so meaningful. Um, we don't expect that to change. Joel, I was wondering uh, since you guys got back in town from Tampa, uh, as you move around Chicago or like that, have, you, have anybody stopped you? Are there any stories you could share about fans? You know, giving you encouragement on the street. Anything you could share about your run-ins last couple of days? Um, kind of low key yesterday, and uh, you know you do get traffic. Seems like going back and forth in and out of town, where people are honking their horn a little bit. But uh, I think at this stage of the game, there's a, there's a real buzz around the city, and uh, you know we've been fortunate to be a part of uh, some fun runs here. But uh, seems like it's gone to a different level this year.